Hey there, and welcome to another Soundtrap walkthrough. The best way to learn from these videos is to view, pause, and imitate. View means watch what is being demonstrated in the video without copying at the same time. It's important to keep your attention on the concept being explained and demonstrated. When this screen comes up, you can pause the video. The concepts just explained will be listed on the screen, so while the video is paused, you can then imitate and explore the concept which was just shown. As a side note, if any templates are used in this walkthrough, feel free to use a different template or your own song because Soundtrap regularly updates their templates and the one used in the walkthrough may not be available anymore. All right, let's begin with another Soundtrap walkthrough. And welcome to our tutorial on automating volume in individual tracks. If you don't know what that means, that's great. That means you're in the right place to find out. But what it does mean is that we're gonna have a lot of fun changing the volumes in our project today. So I'm using the dubstep template project. You can use this one if you like, or you can use any other template, or you can just use your own song, that's fine. Uh, all the concepts that I'm showing you and techniques uh, can be used in any project, so it doesn't really matter. So I've got the dubstep template here. I've just um, I've just deleted some of the tracks in it because they just confuse what we're doing here. But I've left the main ones. Let's just have a listen to um, a little bit of it just so we can get understand what's going on here. So let's have a listen. All right, so we've got a pretty standard dubstep song here. Now, what we're gonna be doing is talking about changing the volume of individual tracks. Now, we've actually spoken about this in previous videos a couple of times. Each track has a volume knob here. So what you can do is if you click on it, you can drag it down. And if it's at 7.30, if it was a clock face, that is at zero. And then if you dragged it all the way to the top, it would go to 4.30. And that means that it's at full volume. And then if you obviously have it facing at 12 o'clock at the top, that means that it would be at half the volume. All right. So um, what we can do is we can change the volumes of these. And that's what we did in our previous videos when we looked at things like mixing. If you're not sure what that is, you can um, go to the previous video in this series. So we can set the individual volume. So let's just have a listen to that. So I'm just going to mute. Uh, I'm just going to solo this drum track and go back to the start. Let's just have a listen to this by itself at this volume that we have it set at. All right, so that sounds pretty fine. It's at a medium sort of volume. Now, that volume stays like that now for the whole track. However, if if the volume of a song just stays the same the whole time, that's going to start to get pretty boring. So the problem is, what if we want to change the volume of a song as the song is playing along? Maybe you want to have louder parts and soft parts. Well, that's what I'm going to show you how to do today, and it's called automation. So what we can do is we have this automation button here. It's got all these dots collected with lines and you can see here it comes up with some little text saying show hide automations. So if we click on that, it says add an automation. So that's what we're going to do. So let's click on add automation and then you can actually change which automation you want to change. Um, so we're going to choose the volume one here because that's what we want to do. So what you can see here, it looks a little bit complicated, but let me just explain it to you. We still have our each individual tracks like normal. However, what it's also added is it's added another track, which is basically just a shadow of the one above, and it's got a line across here. And this line is now showing the volume of this track. We've got another box down here, which says add automation. And that's if you wanted to change some automation for the sweeping or the panning. We're not gonna talk about that today, um, but that's just what that means for there, okay? So we're just gonna focus on the drum one at the moment. So let's have a look. What you can actually do is if you click on this line and if you drag it up or down, that actually changes the volume of, the, of just that track, okay? So let me play from the start and I'm gonna move this line around and listen for the changes that happen. If I drag it up higher, it's gonna get louder. If I drag it down low, it's gonna get softer. So 
So you can see that that's giving you the same control of the volume as if we were using this volume dial here. So you can see if I change it, it um, move my mouse up and down, it changes as well. However, the difference is we actually get these automation markers, these dots here, which allow us to change the way this line works. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go and grab this dot here and I'm going to drag it to the start. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on the line and it actually makes another dot. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag it up or down, you can drag it across. So you can see that you can add this dot anywhere in the in this shadow track that you like, in this automation track, and the line connecting it to the previous one actually stays, um, keeps them together, all right? So what that means is, is if I drag this one to the top here, what's gonna happen? It's gonna start nice and soft up here, and then it's gonna slowly grow and grow until it gets really strong um, here at bar five. So let's have a listen to that. And then if we wanted, we could do the opposite here. So I'm gonna click, and I'm gonna drag it down, and now I've got it coming down. Let's do some really crazy stuff so you can really hear it. So I'm just gonna keep clicking and adding these dots and let's put a big dive here. I'm gonna click and add some dots here and let's have a listen to that. And if you don't like one of these dots, what you can do is you can click on it and when it's colored in, that means that it's the one that's selected. And then you can actually delete that just by pushing the delete button on your keyboard, or you can actually, uh, you can select it, right click on it, and if you push delete here, that will get rid of it as well. But it's easier just to push backspace or delete. All right, so let's just tidy this up a little bit. Uh, I'm actually, oh, what you can actually do is you can actually just drag across and if I push delete, that'll get rid of all of them. So if you wanted to actually use this in a practical sense, if I've got this song here, um, what I might like to do is I'm gonna set different volumes for the different sections of this song. So if you have a look, we've kind of got three sections. We've got our main section here, which we could probably call maybe like our verse, or let's just call this section number one. Then we've got our next section here, which is in the middle. This is kind of like our main chorus. We're gonna call this section number two. And then we've got our section number three here at the end, which is kind of like our outro. So what you could do is you could maybe say that you wanted this section to be nice and soft at the start. So I'm gonna keep that soft. But then as it starts to lead up to the second section, I want it to get a little bit louder, a bit stronger. So what I'm gonna do here is just bring the volume up. Um, yeah, let's bring it right up there. And then as we're heading down, I want the volume to come back down again. So I wanna start with a softer section. I wanna have it strong in the middle, and then I wanna become soft again. And do you know what you could do? You could also do a fade out towards the end. That would sound pretty good as well. So uh, I'm not gonna play that for you because we've already done that experiment, but you can see here what it looks like. Now, just say you wanted to apply though that volume to all the other instruments because remember that this is only changing it for the drum instrument at the moment. If we unmute all the other instruments, they're just gonna play like their normal volume. So what you can actually do is you can add another automation. So if I wanted to add it to the, um, the tops here, you say click automation, uh, button, I'm gonna click add automation to volume. Now what you could do is you could grab this one and you could click and you could kind of make it look the same. But if you've got lots of tracks in your song, that's gonna take a lot of time to do and you're not gonna get, you're probably not gonna get exactly the same one that you had. So what we can do is like we selected all, you can click and drag over all the ones that you want. Now remember, you're only selecting the shadow of your track. You're only selecting the automation, not the actual sounds of it. So now what I can do is, they're all colored in, which means that they're selected. So now I can copy them. So I could go Control C, or you could right click 
um, you'd have to right click on the line or on the dot. So I'm gonna right click on one of the dots and I'm gonna push copy. And then if I drag it down here, which is the start of my other track, I could do control V or I could just uh, go anywhere here and paste. And then you'll see that it's actually copied exactly the same automation. I could do that for the piano as well. So if I go here, uh, add automation, volume, right click, paste, or you can do control V. And oh, it copied it in the wrong place because the marker was in the wrong place. So I'm just gonna undo that. You've gotta make sure that you bring the marker to where you want it to paste. That's good that you saw that, so you can problem solve that. So bring the volume here. So the marker's here now, and I'm going to control paste. There we go. So now you can see that it's got exactly the same shape, which is really, really good. Now, even though the volume is being controlled now by this automation, you can actually still use the volume knob here to adjust the overall volume of all of that automation. So let me show you what I mean. Let's just say we've got the drums and we've got the tops here and you've got the same automation on both of them, but you've realized that the tops is actually just a little bit too loud overall. So you still want it to follow this pattern of going higher and um, stronger and softer, but generally it's just a little bit too loud. So what you could do is you could drag them all kind of down like this if you wanted to, but that's a little bit time consuming. It's not very accurate. So what you could do, I'm just gonna undo those changes. What you could do is you could select all of them. So I'm clicking and dragging over them all. I'm going to one of the dots, it doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna select it and I'm actually gonna drag them all down. So I can do that or I could drag them all higher, so you can change them all at the same time. You can actually do that just with the volume um, knob here as well. So what I'm gonna do is I want them all a little bit louder, so I'm gonna click and drag my mouse up, there we go, or I'm gonna click and drag my mouse down. Now look what happens if I drag it all the way down. Actually, I might do this by uh, grabbing, uh, let's just add some more spikes into it just so I can show you first. So I'm gonna add some spikes here. So if I select all of these, and if I drag them all the way to the top, you'll actually see when they hit the ceiling of it, they'll actually just flatten out, and then they've kind of hit their peak there. And then if I drag it back down again, it kind of keeps that shape, which is pretty cool. Um, if I drag them down, they flatten as well. So they're just flattening out and then if I drag them back up, they kind of stretch back up again. So there's options if you've copied um, the automation to another track, but that track that you've changed it to is just maybe a bit too loud or soft. This is particularly useful when you're doing your mixing, making sure all the volumes are balanced. If you're doing that, you can just adjust it by just dragging them all down. Now you can see the next problem here is there's a lot of space in between your tracks and this is starting to fill up your screen. It's gonna be hard to see your screen. So what you can actually do, once you've made your changes, you can actually hide them again. It doesn't delete them, it just hides them. So then if I push that button again, it just folds it back up and then it goes back. You can actually see just kind of really, really faintly, or it's actually behind the track. Oh, it's there. It's just really, really faint. You can actually see the changes that we've made with that automation as those lines. Yeah, it's really dim. You can't quite see it, but that's okay because if you wanted to see it again, you just click on back on that automation button and there it comes up. So it's still there. It's just being hidden at the moment. The last thing I just wanted to quickly show you with this is maybe you just wanna get rid of that automation um, or just turn it off for a second. There's two ways that you can do that. If you just wanna turn it off, but still keep it there for later, you can just click this little power button here. So if I click this, you'll see that the volume automation here goes dull. And I think the color changed as well. Yeah, the color changes to a darker color. So now they that won't take effect at all. All right, um, what you can also do is you can just delete it. So if you click this X here, it'll say, do you wanna delete the automation? And yes, so now all of that volume automation that you did is now deleted. 
And thanks for watching another Soundtrap walkthrough. If you enjoyed this video, you can like and subscribe. And why not check out some of our other Soundtrap walkthrough videos.